Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, Bloodshot, issue number seven. I know, I'm slipping. I'm, I'm slacking off a little bit. This comic book came out last week, and here I am with this thing, like a week later, and I'm going, oh, I'm going to get to it, I'm going to get to it, but I had to get to it. I had to get to it. So this is essentially the Valiant Week. Uh, let me throw out who made this comic book. We'll talk about the comic book itself. We got writer Tim Seeley, artists are uh, Mark Lemming and Jason Masters. The colors are by Andrew Dowhouse. Letters by Dave Sharp. A whole bunch of covers, including by Tyler Kirkham, Kel Ngu, uh, Nick Varela, and Juan Doe, famous for Aftershock Comics. Really good stuff over there, too. Just saying. Just saying. He's So it's nice that they got him doing some covers over here. So check this out. Um, Agent Nick's is hanging out and he's in charge essentially in charge of the burned this new clandestine organization full of um different basically people from different walks of life different countries they were cia or kgb or whatever and all of them were burned they were all just abandoned by their government uh, act like oh no well, we completely disavow them which means you can't even come back home so of course what do they do they form their own uh organization where they're going to go and try and do what they got to do. And basically, Bloodshot was given an offer that he simply could not refuse. Hey, man, we will fund you, and you do the missions that you want to do. And obviously, there was something in return that they expected, although we never saw it. That's why this comic book seems to be going a little bit wonky for me. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm going to explain. Okay? Um... Bloodshot goes over and he helps out the former Psyost that he was uh, trying to help, Agent Edelon, and she actually didn't need his help. It's funny because this super duper, basically he's like this, this, uh, this cannon, and you just aim it, and it will shoot to death whatever it's, it's aimed in front of. Uh, when it goes off on its own, people are going to get hurt, friends, foes alike, right? So he needs to be aimed because he's not great at thinking things through at all <laughs> it seems like when he does things on his own bloodshot just winds up getting to more trouble than is worth right but i guess he can shoot his way out of any situation anyway <laughs> all that being said agent nix apparently did want something out of him the burned definitely did seem to want something out of him mind you he acted on his own agent nix but that being said he decides to turn against bloodshot you don't pull crap like that because he's because Bloodshot's not going to think about it, be like, you know, you did really help out. No, 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 no. This was the package you gave me. And then you're turning around, you're reneging. We got to have ourselves a conversation. And I'm not going to say two words about it. I just got two trigger fingers. They're going to be doing the talking. That being said, um, normally I enjoy a comic book that is... It can be as fast-paced as you want it to be, but allow the storyline to breathe. Allow us to be able to go through a storyline. Now, I actually don't have a problem with this storyline being rushed through. Because think about it. We got four lousy issues, you know what I'm saying, of the Burned, this new organization that Bloodshot's supposed to be working through. And I'm thinking to myself, well, this could go on for at least a couple weeks, you know, uh, at least a, a couple of arcs. Even if they're only four issue arcs, like Valiant seems to do. We can have a couple of arcs of this where, hey, <laughs> he's... Um, he's working with these guys, and if they do turn on him, at least we had the idea that, you know, oh, we weren't expecting it. This is so early. I feel like, you know, we were all expecting it. I was expecting it. Like, what's going to be the thing? Now, the only problem I have with this is I don't see the thing. Now, maybe they'll explain what it is. Why exactly did Agent Nix have the problem? Because he talks to him for a long time, but for me, it didn't really come across as anything special to me. It's like, oh, we helped you out, but we wanted you to do things, even though we never told you that we wanted you to do things. You didn't show the proper gratitude. What is this, the mafia? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that doesn't seem like something that's going to really pull it over. But there is an explanation, and I'm, I am genuinely curious in the comments more than anything else, how did you feel about the explanation? Because I don't think it really did it for me, and I feel like this did rush it a little bit. But I don't have that big of a problem with it being rushed. Why? Bloodshot is a very different character, all right? Bloodshot, to me, my understanding, he's not that smart of a guy. He's not going to be able to, without guns, he's not going to be able to find his way out of a freaking wet paper bag. I mean, let's be realistic. Dude can get locked in a closet, unlock it, and he still can't find the way out. But it's dark. What's this chain thing that keeps hitting me in my face? Dude, turn on the freaking light and get out. Come on. You know what I'm saying? 
um, he seems like a guy who's just not that bright. He's this incredible cannon that just wants to fire everywhere. But if you can lock it down and aim it a certain way, boom, there you go. And to me, I honestly thought to myself, well, this is the perfect way to get Bloodshot working. Um, I don't think that Bloodshot works well on his own unless he's directed, hey, go over here, go over here, you're in constant radio contact with me, meet at the checkpoint, blah, 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 whatever, extraction, you know? Um, it seems to me like the direction that Bloodshot is going now is that Edelon is going to be working with him. Now, she already wasn't very grateful for what he did, for, for breaking her out, so to speak, because there's a lot more that he has to do. But adding on the idea that Agent Nix, not the entirety of the burn, so it seems, is going to be going after him and seems to have a certain power over him, which... I don't think any of us were necessarily expecting, although I guess we kind of should have when we think about how he was found. Yeah, I'm liking that. I love when there's a little bit of callback and it's not like, oh, well, this is how we did it. It's pretty obvious if you if you read those comic books. Um, issue three, I think it was, issue three and four, you get to realize how exactly it was all done. But that being said, this was this was surprisingly good. I almost felt like I didn't want to like it. Right? Because we're rushing through a story, but Bloodshot seems like the kind of character who, it's not just about the comic being fast-paced. It's about the title being fast-paced. Don't lock him down to anything for too long, because he does need to work in an organization. But if there's not some kind of turmoil in there, it's literally just an action comic book where somebody's running in and shooting somebody up, and then he leaves, you know, and he goes back to his team. Hmm... You could pull that off with an Exo Man of War, it seems. But I don't think that works too long and for too well with um, Bloodshot. So the idea that his storylines are ridiculously fast-paced, like out-of-breath fast-paced, almost makes it seem like it's necessary for a good Bloodshot comic. Did I like this comic book? I, I think that I explained that I actually did. Even though certain elements of this comic book go beyond the pale of what I'm used to, my, you know, my taste, I'm 44 years old, man, you know what I'm saying, like, I, I don't know that I'm set in my ways, and actually, I'm clearly not, but being able to read a comic book that everything is there to tell me don't like this comic book, and yet I still walk away thinking to myself, that was actually pretty good, and they explained enough of it that I'm okay going through, you know, going forward in the story. It makes enough sense for me to want to read the next issue. I think that says a lot, personally. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> All that being said, I did enjoy this. Now, I did also wind up getting Rye, issue number five. Uh, this was a pretty good book also. It is actually going in a direction other than what I like. Now, if this is a future version of... Uh, bloodshot, even though with vast differences, then I get it. You know what I'm saying? I get that you're going to do the same thing, but it's pretty much literally the exact same thing. There are so many moments in this comic book that were written where not just this issue, but in all of these issues where I'm thinking to myself, this is actually really good. They could just keep going with this sort of, sort of a storytelling procedure, you know, for many issues to come. And I will still read this and I will still enjoy this. But with everything that's been happening, uh, Mr. Abnett seems to have gotten a little bit deeper into the story still and locked down on something where while all the action was out of this world, dude, you can't argue with Juan Jose Ripe and Andrew Dal Dalhouse again, and Dave Sharp. It's like the same people drawing all the comic books, just different people writing them. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. All right. You ain't no slouch if you're doing two comic books per month, you know, on art. Wow. <laughs> that being said, um, <clears throat> While the action was good, I don't need two comic books doing what feels to be the exact same thing, which seems to be the antithesis of what I usually enjoy in a comic book. Um, a burn, but more on the slow end than the fast paced, you know, and Bloodshot is like burning down the bridges in front and behind it. You know what I'm saying? Meanwhile, Rai doing the same thing. I really have to take a pick between the two. I'm going to stick with Bloodshot. All right, well, I mean, I bought the toy. <laughs> what do you want? But um, yeah, I can't do that with two books, with two totally, you know, essentially different characters. I can't do that. So, yeah, I'm making the decision to stick with uh, Bloodshot. I'm not saying I won't continue reading Rye, but I don't know that I'm going to continue purchasing it. 
but it is what it is. Anyway, all that being said, uh, I enjoyed this. Uh, also, yeah, just another reminder out there to everybody. Unfortunately, with the COVID-19 thing, all the movie theaters were shut down in um, Toronto. Uh, well, for the most part, Canada. The Cineplex is the main theaters here. And I was really looking forward to doing a... Uh, uh, a watch party with everybody for the Vin Diesel starring um, um, Bloodshot movie that was out. I was really looking forward to it. I delayed it for a couple of days because I'm thinking, let's let's take it slow with all this crazy COVID-19 thing. Let's see if there's actually something going on with the movie theaters because they seem like they want to keep it. I was following along very closely. You know, what are they going to be doing? And, um, well, by the time that you see this video, it was yesterday that they said, hey, we're going to actually shut down all of our theaters starting immediately, which means that they were actually closed yesterday also, which freaking kills me. So that means that the uh, Bloodshot movie didn't even get a full opening weekend. That, that sucks. And it's life. Unfortunately, that's life. And this is something that is, it's unfortunate for huge businesses and it's crippling for smaller businesses. So I know there are a lot of comic book shops suffering. And unfortunately, when you put this much investment in a character and, you know, the first movie for Val for the Valiant Universe, the first feature length movie, this sucks. This sucks. So you're not even going to get a an accurate opening weekend um, uh, number launch for what it made. That genuinely stinks. I don't know for how long these theaters are going to be closed for. I don't know if they're able to do a re-release. I mean, with a lot of movies being backed up like this, we don't know if a lot of movies are going to come out on time. So what I can say is that that sucks. In every single way imaginable, it sucks. Um, Valiant Universe, Valiant Comics was nice enough to send me a bunch of these. Uh, last year's uh, um, Valiant Universe Handbook, which gives a whole bunch of the characters inside and explanations and everything like that. And it's a, it's honestly a, a solid good book. Um, I still want to do the watch party. Clearly, I can't now though. So I honestly don't know what to do and I would love to hear some suggestions from you guys as I'm brainstorming as I'm trying to think of what to do what would you guys like to do um it would probably be half like we could wait we could do something else I don't know but like genuinely in my heart this sucks because I was seriously looking forward to it Valiant Comics sent me a bunch of those comic books they sent me a bunch of buttons that are they're extinct, essentially. You, you, For the most part, you can't get them on the streets anymore unless somebody happens to be selling these from, what, eight years ago? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I, I showed, you know, Carlos, my comic book store guy, and he's like, uh, if you don't give all of those away, can I have one of each of those? I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> it's something else. It's something else. And it's genuinely sad. It's messed up. Um, yeah. Yeah. So if you guys have any ideas for what to do with watch party, something along those lines, not just a meet and greet, but something that actually involves bloodshot and or the Valiant universe, please give me a heads up. Um, taking all suggestions and I'm out. Professor Bill Comic Book University. Class dismissed.